I attended Northern Kentucky University, and today I'm taking them over. The Norse are normally one of the best Horizon League teams, so we could make the tournament in year one. After a few seasons, I'm hoping to get NKU a conference invite to like the American or something, and each video will contain a full season. Now, let's meet the starting five, where the backcourt consists of senior Xavier Rhodes and junior Marquez Warwick, while sophomore Sam Vinson, senior Trayvon Faulkner, and senior Chris Brandon run the front court. I also just found out you can upgrade the campus in this game as well, so after deciding will run an up-tempo offense. I was ready to get into our first matchup against Bellerman, who also plays basketball in Kentucky. From the start, Sam Vinson was by far our best player, and that was on both sides of the ball, as he couldn't miss. He was only a sophomore, so he had some learning to do, but it felt like the team surrounding him was good enough to make the tournament this season. I certainly wasn't expecting Bellerman to play the way that they did, so that definitely took me a bit by surprise, and it made the game close throughout the entire first half. However, after going on an 11-2 run against the Knights, we had a lot of momentum and Marquez Warwick continued to capitalize on it. Apparently this NKU team was athletic as well, and after this win, I couldn't wait to see how the rest of the year went. We beat Louisiana in double overtime next, and then it was time for the battle for Atlantis, where we won against Texas Southern and South Alabama, so we made the preseason tournament championship, which was against Seton Hall, and Sam Vincent started it off with this. He needed to have a huge game if we were going to pull off the upset because the Pirates were quite a bit better than us on paper, and so far, they weren't missing a shot. Marquez Warwick was doing his best to keep it close though, so I made sure we continued to play through him, and defensively, everyone was getting involved, so it was only a three-point game at the half. It felt like the upset was actually a possibility, but free throw shooting was a team weakness, so it was a good thing Marquez Warwick kept hitting from deep. We couldn't get rebounds or stop Seton Hall though, so it would all come down to if Warwick could continue nailing everything, and even Xavier Rhodes got in on the action. With about 20 seconds left, Marquez Warwick hit a miraculous shot to put us up by four, and I couldn't believe it, but we were going to win the battle for Atlantis, and everybody was pumped up about it. The undefeated season was on for now, but even though it was a down year for Louisville, beating them wouldn't be easy, so Marquez Warwick would have to be on top of it, and he was as he forced steals on defense and then ran with it down the court to drain a three-pointer. I mean, he was literally making it from every spot behind the arc, and all of a sudden, beating Louisville seemed likely. We were locking them up extremely well, but by the second half, they kept fighting back in it, so we had to start shooting the ball even better, and Sam Vinson stepped up when we needed him to. Center Chris Brandon kept blocking shots as well, so we improved to 6-0 this season, but I should have known all good things would come to an end as we lost back-to-back -back games, and at this point, I was diving a bit into recruiting. I ended up getting multiple commitments including two three-star recruits in Awadi Teal, who's ranked 210th in the country, and power forward Ben Clausen from Pennsylvania. However, we kept getting rough results, so I was glad we beat FIU, and to start Horizon League play, I decided I wanted to step in and take on Green Bay. If we wanted to win the conference and make the NCAA tournament, winning this game on the road would be huge for building up confidence and getting back on track, so I loved to see that we were moving the ball extremely well, and as time expired in the half, Marquez Ward gave us a three-point lead. So far this season, he was our standout star, so I couldn't believe they kept giving him room to shoot it, and we didn't have a great defensive first half, but here in the second, we were playing the best basketball I'd seen in a while. Well, as long as you forget about this one specific play. Anyways, back to the highlights, not the lowlights. After we forced another steal, center Chris Brandon threw down another filthy one, and we left Green Bay with a big win. From there, we went 6-1 and one in our next seven games, so we were on top of the horizon for now, but then we got embarrassed at Cleveland State, and it was time to host our rivals, Wright State. From the jump, we got the crowd fired up as we forced a steal, and then Sam Vinson threw it down, which he would continue to do as he showed off with multiple crazy dunks. Marquez Wark was also draining threes from the logo early on, and Xavier Rhodes was doing more than I ever expected the point guard to do, so we went into the half up by seven, but unfortunately, our 9-0 run ended after we gave up this dunk, and Wright State seem like they just wouldn't go away in this game. I mean, on one end, we were sending away shot after shot, but on the other end, the Raiders were doing the exact same thing, so with two minutes left, it was only a three-point game, and Trayvon Faulkner garnered a lot of attention to get Sam Vincent wide open for three. Then, Xavier Rhodes knocked the ball away, Marquez Warwick scooped it up, 
and he put the icing on the cake as he drilled the wide open shot. So we beat our rivals at home, and after going 6-2 and two in our next 8 games, we could still get the 1 seed for the conference tournament. But we would have to beat Youngstown State, and since both of us were 21-7, and seven, this was a massive matchup, which the Penguins were not taking lightly. Both of us wanted the 1 seed for the Horizon League tournament, and so far, we had been trading buckets back and forth. Sam Vincent got a huge block here, and Chris Brandon fired up the crowd with this slam, yet going into the half, we were only up by 2 points, so we needed to get off to a good start in the second, and with forward Trayvon Faulkner locking up, along with Sam Vincent hitting back-to-back -back threes, we began the second half exactly how we needed to, and Marquez work continued to show why he was our star. Youngstown State was struggling to score now, and I swear we had to set a record for the number of blocks in a game, because our defense single-handedly helped us beat the Penguins, and after we ended the regular season annihilating Oakland, where Chris Brandon had 29 rebounds, we were the one seed in the conference tournament, and our semifinal matchup was against Detroit Mercy, where Trayvon Faulkner started it off with this throwdown, and Sam Vincent drained a wide open three-pointer. He was only a sophomore, but he did not play like it, and he just continued to rack up points for us. However, I won't act like we were playing perfectly, as Detroit Mercy had some athletes on their team, and Antoine Davis threw one down to bring it within four. We didn't end the first half very well, but after getting chewed out for 15 minutes in the locker room, Xavier Rhodes and the rest of the team seemed to turn it around, and Marquez Work showed that he could do more than just launch threes, but on the other side of the ball, I literally have no clue how to describe what happened here, so I'm just gonna let it play out. With two minutes remaining, we couldn't grab the rebound after a missed three, so Detroit Mercy ended up tying it up, and then on their next possession, they drew a foul, which ended up resulting in two made free throws, and all of a sudden, we were trailing, but Marquez Work saved the day for the time being, and then Antoine Davis missed a three on the other end, so we ran down the clock to about 10 seconds left, where Warwick would then miss the layup, grab his rebound, and put it back in. That left Detroit Mercy with limited time to score, and I was surprised that this is what they drew up in the huddle after calling a timeout, but we were going on to the Horizon League Championship, and we would have to play against Youngstown State again. This one was for a spot in the 68-team NCAA tournament, and early on, Marquez Warwick wasn't shooting well, while the Penguins were playing their best basketball yet, so we were not off to the start that we wanted. However, Xavier Rhodes was forcing turnovers on the defensive end, while Marquez Warwick was finally hitting on the offensive end, so as time wound down in the first half, we were in a tight battle, and it was all because Warwick continued to prove he was one of the best shooters in the country. He had literally drained four consecutive three-pointers for us, and going into halftime, the Norse were shooting 57% from three, but Youngstown State came out completely locking us up on defense, so I had to call a timeout and put in junior Trey Robinson, who immediately came in and made a huge impact, as with two and a half minutes remaining, he gave us a three-point lead, along with getting a huge block on the defensive end, so it looked like we were going to beat Youngstown State in the championship, and this bucket would seal the deal for us. Sam Vincent even forced a clutch steal on the inbounds play, and we were going dancing in March as we won the Horizon League tournament. We certainly weren't a one seed as we got put as a 15 seed in the West region, and I couldn't believe we had to take on Kentucky. Stopping Oscar Shibwe would not be easy, and we were not off to a good start as we continued to turn it over and over and give up easy buckets. Even Marquez Work wasn't able to hit a shot early on, and I was relieved when Sam Vincent finally got us on the board with this three. He seemed to be our only chance to stay in the game as he was forcing turnovers while while scoring on the other end, and then Marquez Warwick stepped up, extending our run to eight. Our ball movement was excellent, and if we could hit more shots, I think we could pull off the upset, but Oscar finally ended our run with this bucket, and we went into the half down by four. Fortunately though, Marquez Warwick didn't let it get out of hand as he kept draining threes in Kentucky players' faces, but Jacob Toppin was a little bit of a size mismatch for us, and we were definitely at an athletic disadvantage. Sam Vincent kept drilling shots to keep us in the game though, and we were looking to be the second straight 15 seed to upset Kentucky. With two minutes remaining, we actually took a two-point lead, but the Wildcats just kept finding ways to stay in it as we couldn't grab a rebound, and then disaster struck as Marquez Warwick lost it on one end and Oscar slammed it down on the other. He tried to tie it up as well on our next possession, but it rimmed out, and it took forever to send Kentucky to the free throw line, where Antonio Reeves drilled his first shot and hit the second one as well, so no matter how hard we try,
tried, we weren't going to upset two-seeded Kentucky this season. TCU ended up winning the entire thing, and after having a good first year at NKU, I received a ton of job offers, but obviously I didn't want to leave the Norse in this recruiting class, so even though we lost three key starters, I also got guard Larry Alvarez to commit, and I couldn't wait to get into my second year here.